Hello everyone, welcome back to another Try Hack Me box walkthrough. Today we're going to be doing Silver Platter. Relatively recent box time is recording. I've enjoyed a good holiday break. I'm excited to get back into things. Alright, so we've already got the box running. As always, make sure to edit your host file. Make sure you have the information for the box in there. So, as always, we're going to start with a simple in-map scan to see what we can find. For this, we're going to use the dash F and dash PN options. Okay, we see that we have SSH open, we got port 80 and port 8080, an HTTP proxy. Interesting. Let's do a version scan and see if we can find any more information on these three. And for that, we're simply just going to do the dash P, give it three ports. We'll do PN again, and we'll do the dash SV and dash SC options, see what all we can find. Okay, we got the results back. SSH, so we run version 8.9. Our HTTP port here is an Nginx. And it doesn't look like we got too much more information from that except for the title of the web page. And on the proxy, it doesn't look like it was able to find too much. We got a 404 error on the landing page here. It doesn't seem to be anything really useful right off the bat here. Okay, so the next thing to do is any box that has a website is we need to go check it out. So I've got the page loaded here. You can see it's pretty simple and basic. Not much on the screen here. We have a link here for HTML5. We've got four buttons here. We can click through them. We see it just kind of talks about the company and not too much information on this first one. So we don't really find anything until we click on contacts. Now here we've got the name of a project manager, Silver Peas, and his username, Script Kitty. So make sure to put those two pieces of information in your notes because they may come useful later. Okay. I've also looked through the code of the website and there's nothing really that stands out there as really being helpful. So next let's do a directory scan. And to start this we're just going to do a simple fuzz scan. We're going to use the big .txt file from web content of the sec list and we're just going to see if we can find any subdirectories. The scan's done and it seemed to found two things, asset and images. But if we go and look, here's the asset page, we get a 403 and we get the same thing on the images. So let's go check out that port 8080. Okay, so when we load it directly, we get a 404, nothing found. Let's go do a directory scan on this, see if anything pops up. Okay, we're going to use the same command as before. But as you can see, we have attached that port 8080 to the end of the URL. Alrighty, it looks like we got a couple of hits. They are coming in as 302s on this. Console and website, let's go take a look. Okay, for console, we get a no redirect html and 404 error interesting and for website we get a forbidden interesting so there's obviously something here so now it seems that we're kind of lost we haven't been able to find any other directories you could do a more in-depth scan if you wanted to but remember we have two pieces of information the project manager's name and the name he goes by i thought it was a long shot at first but let's go for it let's see if we can use either one of those to find a website as of course we'll start on the port 80 first okay we're back on the port 80 page and we typed in silver peas and we get nothing well, surprising, Script Kitty doesn't get us anything either. Let's go check out the port 8080. A swing and a miss on Script Kitty on 8080. Let's go check out the other one. And we have a hit. There is a hidden website. This now, of course, we can always look for default credentials. Try those out. We can take a look around, see what we can find out. We see that down here, it is a slightly older version of Silver P. So if we go exploit hunting, that's something to keep in mind. We'll look for anything 2023 or newer. Alrighty, so we're at the silverpeas.org website. And as you can see down here at the bottom of this page, it says the default credentials are silver admin, silver admin. So let's try that out. All right, doesn't seem to work. Let's go see if we can find an exploit. All righty, so it looks like we found a CVE that might help us, and I'll leave a link to this in the description so you can go look it up and read about it yourself. But basically, according to this, if we can capture the login process and just simply remove the password option in the field, we should be able to bypass the login. So let's give it a try with Burp Suite. Okay, so you can see I've got it captured here, and I've got the password portion highlighted. Just going to delete that, make sure there's only one amber stand, so we got login and domain. And hit forward, hit forward on the next request, and we'll just select forward all for these. Quite a lot of packages here. Alright, it looks like the page is loaded, so let's go here and turn off the burp proxy, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. And we are in. Cool. Can't read a thing. Don't know what language is this off the top of my head. Alrighty, so I did stumble across this by clicking on the administrator button up here. I'm guessing that's what it translated as. In Miss Notifications, figured that was just like notifications sent to the administrator. It seems we get some of this here. And if we look through this URL up here, we see that ID 2. So what happens if we change the number? In this window, we can't. But what we can do is select all, copy, and post it in our main web browser. Make sure you... Uh, put that HTTP in the front, colon forward slash slash, because depending on your browser, it just doesn't do it right, and you got to manually do it from time to time. 
So now we got this in there and we can see the message, whatever it says. So let's iterate through this and see what we can find. Let's start with zero, because remember, Peters start with zero when counting. Nothing there. So I'm gonna go through and see if we find anything interesting. Alrighty, so here we go. I'm gonna have the password blurred out, but we found some SSH login credentials. So add those to your notes and let's go help back in our terminal. Okay, so here we are. We're going to SSH as Tim into silver platter. You may have asked me about a fingerprint. Just type in yes. Here we'll just uh, paste in that password. And there we go. Where is Tim? Now let's run a couple of things to see what we're working with here so we can kind of get an idea of what our next move should be. First off, we'll run ID to see what groups we're part of. Okay, now as you can see here, he is part of the admin group. So that means we have access to some system resources. Also log files, which could be potentially interesting. Let's see if you can do anything with sudo. Not able to run sudo stuff, so. Last, let's check the etc password file and see what other users or interesting tidbits of information are here. Alrighty, so we pay close attention here. We see we have the root, and then we've got another user named Tyler, and then we got Tim, who we currently are. We know there's another user, so we potentially may have to move laterally to them first. We can't do anything with sudo, but we have admin. So let's go dig through those log files and see what we can find. So if you're not familiar, pretty much all your log files normally are going to be stored in slash bar slash log. So if we just do an ls to see what we have here, you can see we have a decent little amount. Now, one thing that's interesting is you notice we have auth logs. So let's see if we can cat those out and see if we can find anything interesting. Okay. So the command we're going to use this with is going to be cat slash var slash log slash auth because remember we have multiple authentication files. We're going to pipe that into grep. Now for my system I had to use the dash a and the dash a is great when you run the grep command you get that binary match found but it doesn't print anything out. The dash a option will tell it to run it as a text file instead of a binary file so you can actually get some output. The dash i is going to say hey ignore case sensitivity and we give it the word pass because we want to see if anybody logged in with a password of any type. So we hit enter. All right, I'll have it blurred out, but we can see we do have a database password, and we could move forward with trying to connect to this database, see if it's running on the machine, and dig around in there. But remember, we have that other user, Tyler, and we have a password, even though it says Silver Peas is the user here. Let's throw the password at the user and see what happens. So we'll do that with SU Tyler, paste in that password we found. There we go, we're at Tyler. Okay, so let's do the same thing run our ID and sudo to see what we have and what we're part of. Alrighty, so we see that Tyler is indeed part of the sudo group, which is good. Quite a bit of access to the machine. All right, run that sudo dash L, and he has all all, so that allows us to automatically get to root. So we can just do sudo su, there we go, we're root. Get your flags, complete the box. That'll be all for today. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned a bit. If you did, please remember to subscribe and like the video. It really helps out a lot, and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.